face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up, guys? And of course, as always, welcome back to an episode of Who Was Really Better? And this week, we're looking actually upon the strongest special wall breakers in the whole game, being Mega Guard War versus Tapu Lily. Now, this episode is actually quite complex, mainly because I actually changed up a little bit how I view the Pokemon. Basically, you give you guys an honest shot to see what makes a specific Pokemon unique, between, of course, going over them both at the same time. We're actually going to talk about the individual Pokemon side by side, and then go through which one possibly is really better between them. Now, that said, both of these Pokemon pack the same type of issues, which is actually quite unlikely, consider, of course, as the other one being, of course, a Mega Pokemon. So is whether or not a type of Lele is actually a contender for Mega God Wars viability. And yeah, it actually is up there. It is whether or not if it is better. And this is, of course, why we go over their stats, abilities, and move pool to see, of course, which one of these two are really better. So first and foremost, let's talk about the Pokemon introduced first between these. So Gardevoir, one of the really, really most interesting aspects that comes with this Pokemon is that it is one of the strongest wall breakers in the whole game. It was introduced Generation 6 from, of course, the pre-revolution of Gardevoir itself in Generation 3, which of Generation 5 actually was in you. So something happened with Gardevoir and it was clearly the fairy type boom, which definitely did it make it a lot stronger. Now it should definitely be stated that Psychic Fairy does not complement each other that well, while you do get a lot of dark um, weakness with Psychic in mind. Psychic is not neglecting anything on Fairy, and Fairy doesn't necessarily resolve anything on the Psychic side, but the combination itself is strong, very strong offensively. So with that said, we have immunity in Dragon, Fighting and Psychic, and weakness to Ghost, Poison and Steel. So it's very easy to say here that of course, that will also resolve the bug weakness on Psychic. But as a whole here, it really stands out that Psychic does not help Fairy whatsoever. The only thing one could really take out of this is that Psychic Stab does resolve Poison Pokemon's issues. So on its own, it's not necessarily that good of a typing, but it is as stated one of the stronger offensive typings with this in mind. So what makes Gardevoir that interesting? Well, its stats is actually very good. It does enforces that it can be an offensive Pokemon or an offensive wall breaker for a lot of time, mainly because it aren't necessarily that easily forced out due to a very fast speed here. While HP, defense and attack doesn't necessarily help it all that much, its special attack of 165, special defense of 135 and speed of 100 does kind of make the difference. Uh, special Defense clearly does make it that it is bulk on the Special Defensive side, even though the HP is quite low with 68, but it also speeds her, making it able to outspeed any defensive Pokémon fairly well, and even some offensive Pokémon not quite nicely. One where speed here for a Wall Breaker is very high. It is definitely one of the highest Wall Breaker speed in the whole game, making Mega Gardevoir a very, very ferocious mon on its own. And one thing that really stands out with Gardevoir is its abilities. While it has Trace and Synchronize before actually evolving, Trace could be counteractive or actually possible to swift, 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 swim with team or chlorophyll team or anything like that, capitalizing on tracing their ability. But the Pixelate is where it's at, making any normal move fairy and actually boosting already its fairly high attack to 20% extra damage, not stab, but extra damage. So its ability clearly make it one of the strongest, if not the strongest fairy type in the whole game. And I really couldn't be happier you're talking about it. Now, when it comes to the move pool, it does have an array of the things here. Since it has in Generation 3, there are a few niche moves in bond with this Pokemon. We're going to talk about the relevant ones being a Moonblast, if you don't want to capitalize on the lines of, of course, Hyper Voice, which we're going to talk about. Stored Power, if you want to go for the Calm Mind set. Uh, we also have Sidekick, we have Side Shock, Shadow Ball, Thunder Ball, Focus Blast, Energy Ball, uh, Will O Wisp, and Thunder Wave, which are great supporting move, mainly because you can actually nerf the attack of a Pokemon or paralyze them making them unable to possibly outspeed you. We also have Encore. Encore might not sound as interesting, but due to the high speed tier in mind, uh, Gardevoir is able to actually punish defensive Pokemon who want to recover towards it and of course actually capitalize and actually outspeed them and ruin them basically with Calm Mine and whatnot. Uh, Pain Split is also one of those things that does make it able to recover possibly. It also has Wish and Healing Wish, which are not mentioned here, but does get them to Healing Wish, of course, one of those moves that makes sure that any other teammate can be fully recovered. 
Uh, while Vision is not as interesting due to its low HP, it is still a possible move for it to be capitalizing on skill swap. While Pixelate has its um, niches and strong viability, skill swap can be something to punish teams too, mainly because if you face a team that could possibly have a uh, ability you want to capitalize more on, you will be able to do that just fine and actually have Moonblast or Hyper Voice with that in mind. Hyper Voice is probably the strongest fair move in the whole game, mainly because it actually has the Pixelate ability, making it special and boost it by 20%. So it's worth keeping that in mind when it comes to capitalizing on Mega Gardevoir, making a very, very ferocious money indeed. Uh, another thing that you can do with Mega Gardevoir is actually capitalize on Disable. Encore and Disable is a very, very mean combination and it can do this really well. Mainly because, as stated, the speed tier can allow it to punish defensive Pokémon very, very, very nicely. Um, filler moves we have here are actually Mean Look, being able to lock, of course, a Pokémon in towards it, being able to set up Call Mine for possible stored power set. Uh, another thing is Momentum, making it able to actually destroy a Pokémon defensively or offensively, depending on how you want to capitalize it. Momentum do lower the attack and special attack on the Pokémon while falling, and Destiny Bond, of course, is self-explanatory. If you have speed and fall, yes, you go into KO the Pokémon's ahead of you if it hits you with a physical or special attack. And Grudge would definitely not as useful, it does actually just ruin any PP that opponent want to capitalize on, so it could be great against the likes of, for example, Mega Venusaur, who could easily KO with a Sludge Bomb. Being able to do Grudge versus that means that you could actually plummet that Sludge Bomb, making it able to only spam possible Giga Drain or Earthquake, which could be very helpful in a League concept if you want to capitalize on another Pokemon to be able to set up. But that's all there, Mega Guard War stands out because it's a, a broad array of move pools and also learns Ice of Wind and other stuff, which makes it very, very unique. And being able to actually support a team with either Will O Wisp or Thunder Wave or actually on its own, being an extremely offensive Pokemon with the likes of Focus Blast and whatnot, is making it very, very unpredictable and hits so goddamn hard on so many things, making it one of the strongest, like I said, wall breaker in the whole game. Now, that said though, we have another extreme wall breaker introduced in this generation, being generation 7, and it might as well be as ferocious if not even more. So, Tapu Lele, one of the most interesting Pokémon introduced in this generation. Now, I don't have to go over Psychic and Fairy again, but I will say this, Tapu Lele is probably the single most interesting Pokémon Generation 7, mainly because it did turn the whole meta on its head with its viability and most certainly its ability, Psychic Surge. Now, when it comes to the stats of Tapu Lele, uh, one can really say that, that it's very reminiscent of Mega Gardevoir. It uh, has a slightly higher defense, slightly higher HP, and has one or very special attack, which I think is fair. It's definitely lower than Mega Gardevoir. We also have one of 15 special defense, which at the same time here, yeah, that's lower, but it still is very high and a bit slower in speed here of 95. 100 is definitely more desirable, I would say, but 95 is a very high stat for a wall breaker also. So, straight on at it, the ability which makes the, or break pretty much the tabulele, which is a psychic surge. Uh, psychic terrain is what it's created for far more terms at least, and it negates priority, which is definitely one of the more stronger niches with it, that one being that it boosts psychic attack damage, which for Tapulele's case, a special attack in 130, and being able to actually capitalize on items, unlike in Mega Gardevoir, will make Tapulele the more offensive one with its psychic stab in mind. That said though, the main perk with Psychic Surge and Psychic Train on its own is that any grounded Pokemon can't capitalize on priority, such as Mega Mole, for example, can't capitalize on Sucker Punch, Mega Scissor can't use Bullet Punch, which probably would have been the number one shake towards Lele, but due to the Psychic Surge and Rain, there is no way a Bullet Punch will land, making Lele always faster than Mega Scissor, which is just unheard of, which is extremely dangerous with this in mind, because it does mean that Lele supports itself fairly well, it's not easily forced out, and it also gets telepathy if you want to capitalize on that. You do not want to ever use that. But as a whole here, Lele's ability does make it very, very, very dangerous. Now, when it comes to Tapu Lele's move pool, it will, since it of course being introduced in Generation 7, 
be less than Guard Wars in so many ways. Of course, without the generations transpiring, we have no two removal accessibility here, we have no unique TMs towards it. It is very heavily reliant on the regular TMs on Generation 7 plus its level up move pool. So with that said, it does actually have a fighting chance because it does have a lot of moves reminiscent of Mega Guard Wars, even though it doesn't get all of them. First and foremost, we have Nature's Madness, which works like Super Fang, we can actually reduce the Pokemon's HP by 50%, but it's fairy based, which means that no Pokemon has immunity towards it, that a Super Fang has immunity towards Ghost. That doesn't happen here. It does have a small chance of missing, but it is a very strong move, mainly because the Pokemon that could possibly shake it, such as actually Blissey or, you know, Mega Aggron and whatnot, they will be forced to take a lot of it, damage onto them, and due to Lele's move pool, it is able to kill anything on the Switch chains fairly easy due to this. We also extra sensory, which have a flinting chance. We have flatter, which raises spell attack on opposing Pokemon, but makes them confused. Moonblast is of course your bread and butter on the fairy base. We have Focus Blast, which is the same as Guard War, but due to fight GMC and being really capitalized on item, of course, Focus Blast is that much scarier, I would say. We also have Energy Ball, we have Aroma Therapy, which while it is a unique move, uh, I really have to say. Guard War does get heal bells, but it still has a good move to be knowing that it can recover opposing Pokemon's uh, or its own teammates' stats. Well, I mean, look, we saw the same thing here, we can lock opponents in. We have Thunderbolt, we have Thunder, which is something Guard War does not get, which makes an electric Electrium C a lot more interesting. We have Psychic and Sunshock, of course, we have Shadow Ball, we have Calm Mind, and unique move on Lele is Tickle making it able to actually reduce the opposing Pokemon's defense and actually attack. And Tickle is actually fairly okay with Tapalele, mainly because you can capitalize on Psyshock with it. And making it able to actually reduce the opposing Pokemon's uh, attack could be very good, because Lele, as stated, has a very high special defense. While defense is a decent to some extent, being able to reduce it is, of course, always a lot better. It does lack the Thunder Wave and Will-O-Wisp, and it actually has Grass Knot over Guard War. But other than that, Lele has clearly a lot less to the table, but the moves it gets, in Myers' opinion, are just as ferocious as Mega Guard War to some extent, and you know, with the likes of Specs, Scarf, or Life Orb, its damage output could be even higher than Mega Guard War. While the Fairy Stamp will never be higher, its Psychic as a ability with Psychic and Psy Shock does make it a little more offensively stronger than Guard War. So I would say the Guard War is just as, if not stronger, than Mega Guard War in this matchup, if anything. So what this dialogue actually gonna boil down to is actually not their damage output. While I will say that Lele has overall the stronger due to Psychic and Psy Shock and Terrain stronger accessibility of damage output than Mega Guard War, it actually is stronger. There is no way of actually neglecting that at all. If anything, I'll just say it as it is. Lele overall due to changing OU and actually support its teammates so well with the grounded Pokemon that can't use priority it actually is by default stronger than Mega Guard War. Now, that is of course in the tiers. Leagues are actually a different fashion. While people have been stating over and over again and by very fair assumptions, Lele has been banned from multiple leagues due to the psychic terrain in mind. I am here to tell you guys that it might be for the wrong reasons because Lele is not as ferocious as Mega Guard War in a league concept while the psychic spamming is a very very real deal. One really has to see what they bring to the table. Lele brings exactly the same offensive prowess as Mega Guard War doing but does it better in every aspect besides the hyper voice. But there is where it all ends. Um, I am here to tell you guys, and this is of course going to be the controversial twist of the whole dialogue here, but I actually believe that Mega Guard War as a whole is better than Lele. Not because Mega Guard War is less stronger, of course that's not the case here, but Guard War has a lot more supporting prowess to offer a team than Lele could ever do. While second terrain is fine and dandy, it does work both ways, which means that you can use priority on your own, and it does mean that you have to build specifically for that in mind. And while in OU, that's fine. I think in a league concept, that's a lot tougher, making Guard War more flexible than Lily actually are. And of course, if you face the defensive dark types, you really have to hope that you're able to outspeed. And being locked into something, capitalized on Scarf, in contrast, to actually have a speed here of 100. 
I actually would have preferred that. And I just think as a whole, Gardevoir due to Healing Wish, will wish Thunder Wave, and of course Heal Bell, it is a Pokemon that is very, very flexible for a lot more matchups, and as a own, really does make it, in my opinions, the better between these two behemoths really have a psychic type and very but yeah, this opinion is of course a little bit unorthodox, and of course I know already Lele in OU is a lot better than Mega Gardevoir due to the Pokémon. It ruins by its ability, but I believe on its own Mega Gardevoir just has that area of it that really just function in more ways than one. Lele is the one-man army. Guard War does support them all, and it's come down to their personal preference. And if I have to pick between them two, it comes down to their speed tier and what it brings to the table. And Mega Guard War is one of those Pokemon that I think are underrated because Lele on its own just makes the tier a different being on its own. Had Lele not having Psychic Train, of course, Guard War would have been the better between them two. There is no competition here. Even with the item use in mind, Life Orb for Lele just almost makes it. As strong as Mega Gardevoir. To some extent it does, but not all of it. But due to, of course, the likes of Hyper Voice really boosting it already very high in damage as it is. But Fire MC variant of Lily is the one I prefer, or you know, the choice locked ones. But they are too specific and can be, if the team actually has the option to wave around it, pretty much a very big dent on your own team. Being locked into something that the opposing Pokemon could be able to deal with, yeah, that's going to be rough, and it's going to be rough at fast, and Lele is, while defensive and capable as Gardevoir to some extent, it does get punished a lot harder than Mega Gardevoir, therefore making it, in my opinion, tougher to use when it comes to overarching theme, making, in my opinion, Gardevoir better. That said, though, I am fully aware of the wild people would say different, and I'll even go so far and say that I think it's fair if anybody is disagreeing here, because between these two, this really isn't that easy. And I just basically said as it is that in in a league concept, I think Guard War stands out more, and due to that, making his utility a lot more interesting for me at least. So yeah, with that said, guys, what do you guys think, and what do you like about the concept? You think I can talk about Pokemon like this instead? Does it make the video more interesting? And if not, you know, I'll, I'll stop completely. <laughs> but yeah, thank you as always, of course, for watching, and watch us next time. We're gonna look upon these beasts.